All right, folks from Cliff Castle here for the Handicap Division Super Survivor Finals. This may or may not be the last game. There are three bowlers remaining and a bunch of different scenarios that can happen. Three finalists are Kyle Schultz, a newcomer from the Phoenix area, local guy Brandon Ely, and Ryan Zente, a former JBT champ at the Desert Open. So, Ryan looking for win number two, while Brandon and Kyle looking to win their first career JBT title. Super Survivor is a neat little hybrid of our Survivor format and a regular pins carrying forward turn. I'm just going to show you the sheet that we use to show them the rules. It'll be a little bit easier for you to digest if we do that. So how it works is they're bowling one game. If the low game and the lowest overall pinfall are two different people, the tournament's over. Whoever survived wins the tournament. The low game finishes second and the lowest pinfall will finish third. Now if the low game, this game, and the lowest overall total pinfall are the same person, we'd only eliminate that one person and we'd play an additional game for the title. Sorry about the shakiness there. Right now on the scoreboard you see these, those turtles. Kyle's got the advantage because he has the best plus or minus score for the day at plus 145. Ryan's right behind him at 113, while Brandon kind of in the scariest position at plus 91. However, any of the three of them can still win the tournament this game. Any of the three of them can still be eliminated from the tournament this game. That's why it's a cool format. There's just never a moment's rest for any bowler in any position. So to rephrase how that all works, if the same bowler is both the low game this game and the lowest overall total, we're not done. If there are two different bowlers, we're done. That leaves a bunch of different scenarios. We'll be able to explain that a little bit better once we get towards the end of this game and have a better idea of what to do. Factoring all that in, of course, is the bowler's handicap. Those are the numbers in the little left of the bowler's name in parentheses. Ryan getting a truckload of pins while Brandon, the older guy, obviously uh, getting a little less. And a good looking shot for Ely right there in the fifth grade. <laughs> Thanks as always to the team here at Cliff Castle for hosting us. Somewhere near the 12th consecutive year, we've started off the Arizona Conference here, always fun. He seems to have a good time. We had a great time doing YMCA a couple hours ago. Schultz, a newcomer to our tour, learned about us from the Lamb crew. I sure appreciate spreading the word, that's the only way we stay alive. Very difficult lane conditions today, so it's uh, not a surprise to see some of our lower averages come across as they're not as affected by the pattern. Allie May finished in the top six. Five-year-old Ashley Lamb finished in the top six. That guy finished in the top six, Keith Fung. Schultz is going to miss left twice in a row right here, and he's struggling this game. And that's interesting because he's the current overall pinfall leader. But he has yet to mark, and that's Zent's second mark of the game only. Apologize, Schultz got a spare in the first frame. So this could go topsy-turvy here. Only a three count for Schultz. A little different when all of a sudden you're the only pair of bowling. Right now it's Ely that looks like he's the one that's locked in. <laughs> We're back to like the same lot we always play. Same lot, but just back. Okay then. I will see you after we get her done. Okay then. And another open frame for Schultz after a spare in the first. That's six opens in a row. He is struggling right now with 69 in the seventh frame. Trying to laugh it off. Oh, what a golden opportunity for Ely here as he was the low pinfall heading into this. Right now he's the only one hitting the pocket. He's got strikes and nines every time. He's working on a double right now here in the seventh frame. goes through the middle and leaves the big four. I don't want it, you take it. No, I couldn't take it, you have it. No, I could never do that, you take it. That's what we got going on right now. 
Oh man, it's a good shot from Ryan, but he leaves the 5 7. <laughs> See, his, hear her mom in the background saying, It's on the right side. He, he struggles with things like 10 pins, and meanwhile, on the double, he goes 6 out. Did you teach him to go 6 out on a double? No, not I right. don't think so, he yeah. There we go. It's a pretty good shot at the 5 7. Yeah! Look at that. Great split conversion from Zent right there. It's tough to see exactly where everybody's at right now, but it sure doesn't hurt to make a 5 7. Schultz has to get something going right here. Boy, and flirted with the channel for most of the way down there. Hold on the Kegel boardwalk pattern that forces you to get right and have a right break point. Some of these younger averages, it's not something that are as cognizant of as the uh, match level bowlers. Ryan kind of just does that every time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that time it doesn't. His body language tells the story as he leaves the 4 6 7. Can Schultz make the rail? He can make the rail, all right. Listen, every spare peg right here is uh, still uh, anybody's match here to win or lose right now. One ball, red ball. Well, the field goal's good. When it's a seven out, giving him 88 through eight. That's just about where Schultz is at. Ely's at 115 through 7, and he's giving 30 to Kyle and 60 to Ryan. And has to make up a pin overall deficit as well. Boy, Schultz is kind of all over the place right now. He had a high game earlier today of 195. Also had a 180 and a 168 game. All right, now struggling. He's he had a low game today of 116, and he's in, a, in serious jeopardy of being lower than that. No, oh, gosh, he's open again, 95 feet. Then attacking the head pin. It's a pretty good shot, but a 310 is a very tough spare for Ryan. He doesn't flatten the ball out, but occasionally his ball will roll out, and that will help him make that. So, tough spare, and a big shot for Ely, obviously. It's there. Oh, man. Nice ball and a solid 10 for Ely. Ryan not near it on the 310, unfortunately. As we head towards the 10th frame here. Sorry about the shakiness. Doing our best. Okay, Ely's got this solid 10 to shoot in the 9 pin. Schultz is going to jump up there and get his 10th frame in. Well, it's a makeable spare for Schultz, and if Ely does make his makeable 10 pin. This will be the career high finish for Ely and obviously Schultz either way. So everybody uh, pretty happy with that. It's a long, long season, but like we said on Facebook this week, every point counts just as much in September as it does in June. Oh gosh, and Schultz is not able to make that spare, so it's a rough, rough 102 game. Yeah. And then comes up with a strike in the 10th spring. So Kyle finishes at plus 110, and looks like he'll have the lowest game. Here's Zen in his second shot in the 10th. Nice ball, leaves a 5 pin. Oh, and Ely misses that four pin in his tenth frame. That gives him 163. That's all right. Okay, baby. Ryan misses that to finish up at 115, but that's going to be a 
209 stretch or with his pins, which puts him up to 122. The lowest pinfall overall is Brandon at plus 90. So guess what? Ryan Zent's going to win the tournament. That's your situation right there, folks. Good stuff here at Cliff Castle.